Get your head knees ready now, please. Get your head knees ready. Come on, missus. Don't be fumbling in your handbag. What do you feel standing for there? Get your head knees ready. Well, this is where the outfit is done, collecting the halfpennies on the halfpenny bridge in days gone, boy. You're all right, sir. You're getting through for nothing today. The torn styles went away in 1919. The last halfpennies were paid in 1917 when the lease rang out. The halfpenny bridge was built to take the people across to the Crow Street Theatre. Some people rush across the Hapney Bridge. I like to take my time admiring the lamps and the iron work of the bridge itself. I like to look upriver to the west at the green domes of Adam and Eve's, St. Patrick's Tower, Gandon and Cooley's four courts, and then let my eye come down by the Armand Hotel and Armand Quay. Of course, this was a ferry crossing before the bridge was built. People were afraid to travel too far afoot for fear of being attacked. So they were carried around in sedan chairs and crossed the Liffey by ferry. There were seven ferries crossing the Liffey at various points. Looking down river to the east, to Larkin and Connolly's Liberty Hall and the green dome of James Gandon's Custom House and over on the right Austin's Quay and George Webb's print shop and George Webb bookseller. I think I'll wander over and have a look at the books. I suppose it's true to say that I built up my library here with second-hand books and the far side of the Dublin bookshop. There's Seamus O'Sullivan's book, The Rolls and Bottles. So Seamus stood here himself, as did W.B. Yeats, as did George Bernard Shaw, Sean O'Casey, Podrick Pierce, James Connolly, Joseph Mary Plunkett, Kettle, all the great writers, poets and patriots and scholars. There's a nice one, Maud Garn McBride, a biography of Yeats' beloved. But she didn't marry Yates, she married Major John McBride, who was executed in 1916. And Maud Gone gave a lifetime of service to the cause of Irish freedom. Musical Illusions by James Joyce. And here's a nice one, the Irish Volunteers. There's a nice bit in this by Padraig Pearce about the true flag of Ireland. The authorised flag is a plain gold harp on a green ground and no other flag except authorised regimental colours is to be carried by the volunteers. The green background and the gold harp, the old ancient flag of Ireland before the green, white and orange tricolour. Here's a guide to Finnegan's Wake. I suppose you would need another guide. They're all joyous nowadays. But you know, if you were to tell the truth, there was only two people understood Finnegan's Wake. James Joyce and myself. And Sir James Joyce is dead. Of course, Crown Alley, the Merchant's Arch and the Hapney Bridge, is a great shortcut and very popular with Dubliners. If they didn't get it over in Georgia Street or Grafton Street, come on over with Troy Mary Street or Henry Street. So they're not now now a Dublin song. There's no Dublin songs, lads. That's the stuff. Keep up them Dublin songs. The Merchant's Arch. Of course, it was the Merchant's Guild Hall. And Thomas Trainer's Shoe Shop. Thomas was out in 1916 fought in the Black and Tan War, was executed by the British. There should be a plaque there to him. There's a fine memorial to him in Tullo Carlo. And this is where Leopold Bloom bought the book, The Sweets of Sin for Molly. So there's another bookshop there. And Bourne Shoe Shop, all things bright and beautiful, like Sharon Bourne fixing the shoes. And the Hapney Bridge books. You know, I could never pass by an old bookshop without going in to see could I find another second-hand jam.
The Hapney Bridge was originally called after Wellington. It was also known as the Metal Bridge and the Urden Bridge. The bridge was built by Willie Walsh and John Claudius Beresford. Willie Walsh was the man who had seven ferries operating on the Liffey at various points. The corporation, however, gave him seven days to fix his leaky barges or he wouldn't get a renewal of the lease. Poor Willie went out and spent a thousand pounds on repairs and sure at the end of the year he was back to the carpo. Looks as he would you ever give us back a half year's rent? There's no business on the water this weather. It's no wonder Willie Walsh turned to building bridges.